This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this uh, lecture, we still have budgets, obviously, but um, this one's about cash budgets. And I did mention earlier, when I mentioned the uh, master budget in one of the earlier lectures, uh, I said that uh, most companies will prepare what we call a cash budget month by month which is exactly what it says, it's just forecasting what cash will receive, what cash will pay, and as a result, what our cash balance at the bank is going to be each month. This is normally done monthly. Uh, and it's of interest because if we forecast that, oh, in June I'm going to run out of cash, well, we need to start making arrangements. You know, are we going to borrow some cash? Are we going to try and spend less money or whatever? Anyway, to make full sense of what I mean, let's do an example. And if you look at example three, have a quick look at what we've given. We're presented with the following um, forecast data for the organisation from November X1 through to the following March X2. So you've got there for November, December, January, February, March. We're told what uh, we've budgeted the sales to be, the purchases, the wages, the overheads, uh, the dividends we're going to pay, capital expenditure we're going to have, buying machines or whatever. There's a lot of information below, which we'll read through in detail, obviously, when we come to. But it says, prepare a monthly cash budget for the three months from January to March. Now, you may wonder why have they told us what's happening in November and December. Well, you'll see that as we go through it. But we're asked that each of the three months, January to March, to prepare a cash budget. And standardly, I'll do it in columns, January, February, March. And so we'll read all the relevant information. But what we want to do is we want to list what cash do we expect to receive and what cash do we expect to pay each month. And then, as you'll see, we can sort out what's going to happen to the cash balance. So let's look at the receipts. Now, the receipts of cash, of course, will come from sales, and we know what the sales are forecast to be each month. But look at note A. The sales are 40% cash, 60% on credit. And credit sales, customers pay us two months after the month of sale. So, January. Look at January sales. January sales are 110,000. The cash sales. 40% of them. So if we sell 110 in January, 44,000, 40% are for cash and will be received immediately. The other 60% is on credit. And so although the credit sales in January, 60% of 110,000 are 66,000, we won't get the cash for them in January, it'll be two months later. So February, March, we'll get 66,000 in March. So make sure you're clear there. 110 is what we sold. 40% was for cash and get the cash in January. 60% on credit, get the cash two months later. What about February sales? 130. 40% is in cash. So 40% 52,000 we'll actually get in February. The rest will be two months later, which is April. Well, we're only doing our budget for January, February, March. I'm not bothered about April. Uh, similarly, March's sales, 140. 40% of them, 56,000 is for cash and we get the cash immediately. The other 60% will get the cash two months later in May, but again, not relevant. 
Well, now you should realize why we were given information for November and December. Because November, we sold 80,000. 40% of them will have had the cash in November. But the other 60%, which is 48,000, the cash would come two months later. So sell in November, two months later, December, get the cash in January. So in January, we'll have had the cash from November's credit sales, 60% of 80, 48,000. Uh, December, we sell 100,000, but 40% cash would have had the cash in December, but 60% on credit. The cash will come in January, February. So I do hope you see what's happening. We know how much we sell each month, but what we're trying to get is how much cash do we receive each month. Now, those are the only receipts that are mentioned. So the total receipts, 96 in, um, nope. 92 in January. 112 in February. And 122 in March. I do hope I've added it right, I think I have. Uh, what about payments? Well, we're told there what the purchases are each month, but look at note B. Purchases are paid the month following purchase. Uh, and so, when will the cash actually go out? Uh, we know how much we purchase in November, but the cash will have been paid in December. Not relevant, we're doing January, February, March. Purchases in December, though, 60,000, will pay the cash a month after. Uh, the month after is January. So we'll pay out 60 in January for whatever we bought in December. Similarly, January is 80, we'll pay a month later. The cash will go out in February. February is 90, the cash will go out a month later in March. Uh, March's purchases. We won't pay the cash until April. We're not doing April. Wages. Again, we know uh, the expense each month, but note C tells us 75% are paid in the current month and 25% in the following month. So what about November's? 75% to be paid in November, not interesting to us. 25% the following month, 25% in December, not interesting to us. December's wages though, 75% are paid in December. 25% though are actually paid the following month, which is January. So 25% of 12,000, three Yes, 3,000 will be paid in January. What about wages in January? Well, 75% of them will be paid in January. 75% of 16 is 12,000. The other 25% or 4,000 will be paid the following month, which is February. February's wages, 75% of 15,000 is paid in February. The remaining 25% or 5,000 the month following is paid in March. And finally, March's wages, 75%, which is 18,000, is paid in March. The remaining 6,000 is still owing and will be paid in April. So there's, we don't need to bother adding them up separately, but there is the total cash paid each month in respect of wages. Uh, next overheads. Uh, 
no details as they paid the month after they're incurred. So the overheads in November are 10,000, that's the expense, but it's paid in December. December's overheads though, 10,000 paid the month after, they're paid in January. Similarly, January's overheads are paid in February. February's expense is paid in March. Uh, dividends. It won't affect our profits, but it's a cash flow, obviously. Dividends are paid three months after they're declared. So declared means announced. So in December they announced a dividend of 20,000, but the cash is being paid three months later. So three months later, one month January, two months February, three months, they'll be paid in March. So it's March when we'll pay out the 20,000. And finally, capital expenditure. As I mentioned before, new machines, new buildings, that sort of thing. There's 30,000 bought in January, but it's paid two months later. So although we buy in January, we'll pay for it in February, March, two months later in March. And so there we are, it's just following instructions, but as a result, the total cash payments January 6375 85000 February uh, 114000 March I've had to use my calculator here 90 plus 5 plus 18 plus 15 plus 20 plus 30 178000 And so having listed the cash receipts, cash payments each month, we can get the net cash flow. January, receive 92, pay 85, so a net receipt of 7,000. Uh, February, receive 112, pay 114, so a net payment of 2. March, 122, pay out 178, a net payment of 56,000. And finally, if you remember, I said the objective was to be able to forecast what the cash balance would be at the end of each month. We know what the opening balance is, so the balance at the beginning of January 15,000. During January we receive seven, and so the balance at the end of January, 22,000, the closing balance. We think there's going to be 22 at the end of January, so we start February with 22, and in February a net payment of 2,000. And so, the balance at the end of February, we expect to be 20. If there's 20 at the end of February, we expect 20 at the beginning of March. In March, though, we pay out 56. And so, we're expecting a negative balance of 36,000. And it should now be clear why a cash budget, why it's so important. It's clear that as things stand, we're going to be terribly short of cash in March. We're going to be overdrawn by 36,000. And so we'd better start planning for it. Uh, how can we sort it? Well, maybe we simply arrange with the bank permission to go overdrawn, but we need to make arrangements first. Or maybe we decide we're going to have to borrow money. It'll take time to arrange. Or maybe we'll look at things and say, oh, a huge expenditure was that 30,000 on capital expenditure. 
if I could delay that by a month, perhaps we're okay. You know, either by taking three months to pay, or instead of buying our new machines in January, buy them in February instead. Because if I could delay that 30, there's not such a big problem. Uh, similarly, dividends, if I could delay it. All right, there may be a problem in April, but we don't know what's happening in April. But the point is, having forecasts with problems in March, with time to make plans, see how we could try and receive more money, see how we could try and reduce payments, or, again, arrange with the bank that we're allowed to go overdrawn. OK, we're nearly there. There's just one more lecture, it'll be a very short one, uh, to complete the chapter.